Good morning, everyone, from Hondo, my new home here in China. It is a lovely fall day, and we are heading to the countryside. But this is not just any run-of-the-mill rural bike tour. I'm actually going to be sharing with you guys some miscellaneous life updates, so you can know a bit about what has been going on over the past month of living here in Hangzhou. Goodbye, city. We are officially in the countryside. My first rural China bike tour for I don't know how long. Many months. It has been a long time since I've gotten to come out here, do some biking, and I'm very excited to take you guys with me. Miscellaneous snacks and oranges for sale on the side of the road. Oh, I've missed scenes like these. It's the most simple little thing, but like just seeing it there feels very nostalgic, which is weird because I wasn't even raised here or anything. I've just spent so much time biking in the Chinese countryside that I'm like attached, you know. Some of you are probably wondering if I love rural China so much and I spend so much time in random villages, why don't I move to a village myself? This is actually something I've been wanting to do for a long time, but logistically, it's quite a challenge. First off, barely anyone who isn't local tries to rent, buy, or build property in rural China. Many villages are also family-based, which is why a lot of them are named after the predominant local last name. So for me to just show up as a complete rando with no connections whatsoever would be kind of weird. Not to mention the struggles of commuting to work and losing all the other conveniences of city life. It is quite a challenge, and the current trend is very much that young people are leaving rural areas for the city. But unbelievably enough, an opportunity has actually presented itself, and I may be able to give rural living a try. The place that I'm working at has an office in a village about an hour from Hangzhou. There are three young employees working there, and they are hoping to transfer one more over from the city. And I am trying to get in on that. So a few days ago, one of my colleagues gave me a tour of some houses that are available to rent. And not gonna lie, a couple of them definitely need some work done. This house is what year? What year? Eight years. Wow. Eight years. This is my house. This is really amazing. 下面全部是石头的石头堆砌堆砌起来第二层才是用的是砖头嗯是这样的这里其实到时候弄点栏杆然后在这个地方就可以喝喝茶呀好的那边小阳伞你在这还在养鸡啊对我家刚不一样 the house built in the 80s just needs some tidying up and some renovation, and it actually has a lot of potential. Some of the other houses, not so much, but still super interesting to look at. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, it's pretty rare for people to rent property in rural China, so the pickings were super slim, mostly houses that have been abandoned for years or even decades. The difference in architecture between the decades is huge, and the modernized houses look absolutely nothing like their predecessors from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, but most of them are occupied. Except this one, which was abandoned shortly before being completed when the family decided to move to the city instead.
这个风景真的可以，风景过关，这个房子。是啊，这里可以搞个阳台是吗？加分加分加分加分！哇哦，欢迎啊！谢谢谢谢。<笑> I gotta say this house is pretty much the best one out of all of them. It's just a little bit big. It was starting to feel like living in rural China was going to be a black hole of money spent renovating houses. Until this. This house, the renovations are not very much of a need. This house is designed to be. 干净一点，这个符合你的一个需求，就是一层没有三层。对，这个房子没有那么，没有那么大。啊，是的。This house is definitely my favorite so far. I feel like it has a very homey vibe, and it doesn't need so much renovation. Just some simple little changes. I like this house so much that I actually paid it another visit a few days later when the weather was a little bit nicer. I love this little room here. It's so cute. It has the best view with the mountains and the neighbor's house. Of course, this is gonna have to go. But yeah, I just really like this little room. And there are also two other rooms, so it's spacious but not overly large. You know, some of the other houses had what felt like ten rooms. I don't need that many rooms. You know, cozy little kitchen. Slightly difficult cooking situation, but that's fine. It's a life experience. I love this little bamboo grove here. I want to raise some chickens in there, put some ducks in there. Dream come true. There are still quite a few logistical challenges to figure out, so I can't say for sure I'll be able to make this work. But the fact that I'm even able to explore the possibility of living in rural China at all is super exciting, and I will keep you guys updated. For now, I'm gonna get through the winter in my cozy little apartment in the city while we figure out the details of possibly moving me to this rural office next year. So for the time being, I'll mostly be exploring the parts of rural Hangzhou that are closer to the city, like this place. I love the sounds of the countryside, the chickens, the goats, the breeze through the trees and the grass. But sometimes the road is just too quiet, and during those times, I'll listen to some music, podcasts, or audiobooks. Today, I'd like to recommend to you guys an audiobook app that is the perfect thing to listen to to spice up your workout routine, your commute, or any other everyday task. That would be the sponsor of today's video, Blinkist. If you're like me and you're very curious about the world and you have an endless list of books and podcasts that you want to get through, but you just never have time to finish a single one of them, Blinkist is perfect for you. It has condensed 15-minute versions of over 5,500 non-fiction books and podcasts, so you can get an educational and entertaining look into various topics and enjoy some great insights and nuggets of knowledge. Today, I'm listening to Beyond Culture by anthropologist Edward Hall. Living in China, I experience tons of cultural differences on a regular basis. For example, the U.S.'s individualist society versus China's collectivist society. It's definitely a very interesting experience to live in a society where the core cultural values are completely different from the ones that you grew up with. Because culture is so deeply ingrained, it can be hard to realize that the way you view things isn't the only way. One method to better understand foreign cultures is to better understand your beliefs, even those that you might not have ever questioned. Whether you're interested in technology, philosophy, health, parenting, or various other topics, there is something for you on Blinkist. Come and check it out. Click the link in the description to start a seven-day free trial and get 25% off of a premium membership. There's also a new feature called Blinkist Connect, which allows you to share a premium membership with one other person. So, if you guys are interested, check it out. And now back to life in Hangzhou.
Moving to Hondo is the first time that I'm actually living like a sort of normal adult life. Before this, I was always a student. For years and years, I've been doing all kinds of freelancing stuff and part-time stuff, but this is the first time I've ever had a full-time job. So a lot of people may be wondering, will my channel be able to continue? And the answer is, fortunately, yes. So if I was working at like a regular company, a standard office job, they would probably view this channel as an annoying burden because it takes a lot of my time and energy to make these videos. But to my current employer, they think it's great because this is a way to promote their projects and their work, both in China and outside of China. I mean, this is great for them. So they're not complaining. I can't do the whole like new videos every Wednesday, consistent upload schedule, but I can always find ways to create my own video content in between the gaps. I'm a bit of a workaholic type, so this job fits me perfectly. and every day is different so with a quote-unquote regular job you might go into the office at nine and then you get off at five or six and then the rest of the time is yours with this job you're always working on something you always have to be on alert if there's somebody messaging you about some project or something you have to do in the middle of the night you're always thinking about work but the benefit of it is every day is different every day is exciting i'm always going new places meeting new people seeing new things i'll still be able to do my bike tours as long as i bring my computer and i am on call every evening in the hotel for who knows what task might get dropped in my lap so yeah it's got its benefits and its disadvantages i'll share some more specifics about my job in upcoming videos i just wanted to let you all know that this channel will go on even though i might update kind of slow sometimes that's all for today, everyone. And don't forget to check out today's sponsor, Blinkist, for some super interesting insights and nuggets of knowledge on all kinds of topics. Hope you guys enjoyed this little glimpse of fall in rural Hangzhou, and I'll share more updates with you later this month and next month. See you then.